Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Um, once again, I thank you for subscribing and for your in, your letters and your emails. And yeah, I'm glad I'm helping a lot of people by information, by sharing my the limited knowledge I do have with you. Now, today is a kind of a troubling topic. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to battle through it, but I thought I would start off with a poem. And the poem is... They found a way to make discrimination legal. They found a way to make discrimination legal by placing black men in prison and mental hospitals. Because once they have been assigned to confinement, they cannot travel or gain lawful employment. Doors are closed to every opportunity. He can't meet his needs nor the needs of his family. And if a black man doesn't have a conviction, they manage to depress his every motivation. Crime is only the route to survival. And like a rat in an experiment, it becomes a vicious cycle. The criminal justice system, which is meant to reform and protect, is now being used to control black is now being used to control men who are black. Another form of enslavement to take away the rights of black men who have been conditioned to give up the fight. I babbled a bit on that one, so I'm going to read this last paragraph again, this last stanza. Crime is the only route to survival, and like a rat in an experiment, it becomes a vicious cycle. The criminal justice system, which is meant to reform and protect, is now being used to control men who are black. Another form of enslavement to take away the rights of black men who have been conditioned to give up the fight. Now, I decided to start off with that because um, it's kind of troubling when the more information you look into, the more information you find. And I was listening to Michelle Min's Francis and another lady, but her name will come back to me. But I was just thinking that, you know, they were talking about how the prison system is set up to um, not so much to enslave, but to spoil the black man's chances. Oh, we all know that the prisons are dominated by black men. But why is that? The reason is, they say, because once a black man has been in prison, when he comes out, especially in America, he doesn't have no rights to employment, no rights to food stamps, no rights to housing, no rights to vote, no rights to anything. And so what it does, it takes away their basic needs and it's a double punishment. It's a bit like in the UK where they make them do time and then they deport them. Only what they do in America is much worse. I don't know if it's heading this way. It may have already reached this side, but I don't think to such a severe extent because I understand there are rehabilitation plans in place in the UK. It's very difficult because most of the forms for any job or any insurance say, have you got any criminal convictions? And you know, once you mark that tick, your chances of getting that job or getting a reasonable priced insurance are absolute, you know, are minimal. So what I've got to say today is, is that I'm not quite sure how what we can do about it because it's too far gone. But if you, if people can understand how um, a criminal justice system, which is meant to reform and protect people, is now being used, used as social control and is now being used as racial control. Because if they have all of these black people in prisons, and when they come out, they don't stand a chance in hell. And they've separated them from their families. And, you know, the families are going to be getting on with their lives and probably will want to disassociate if they're not that loyal from them. What do they let? What are they left with? 
It's no wonder that they're angry. And especially when a lot of them are being put in jails for things that they haven't done. Um, I forget the lady's name. Um, but she wrote um, The New Jim Crow. If you look that up, you'll find her name. She's a professor anyway. And what she said is that she, a boy came to her who, what, she's a criminal, she's a civil rights lawyer. And he came to her and said, I need your help. And he collected all of these papers of every time he had been stopped and searched and all the discrimination he had faced. And she said she thought he had a case. But then he said to her, I do have a drug conviction. Way back, it was planted on me. I didn't have anything to do with it. But because she knew that if he had a drug conviction, she wouldn't be able, his, his case wouldn't stand up in court. She said, oh, well, I can't help you. In the end, a few years down the line, she, he tore up all his papers in frustration and he said, you're no better than the police or the criminal justice system. And a few years later, she found out that there were dirty police actually planting drugs on individuals, but it was too late. He had already um, gone wayward and he'd given up hope. But my point is, is that, you know, that is what the system is like. Once you are labelled a criminal, the, the pe people do tend not to believe you. They do tend not to give you a second chance. And there are, there are thank God, in the UK, there are organisations that give um, those who have been in prison or those who have a police record a second chance, depending on what it is. But it's just so sad that you have this situation where a lot of black men in, are in prison and they go in so young that, you know, once you have a criminal record, you can't vote, you can't, you can't travel. I mean, you can't travel to America. You can't, all of your dreams are quashed because you have a criminal record. So what better way is it to stunt the opportunities of black men than to put them in prison, a legitimate way to discriminate against them. Because if they're in prison, they can legitimately say, you know, through forms, through legislation, that they cannot get a job. You know, that, you know, you have to be wary about people who have criminal convictions, even though the system is designed and biased against the majority of black people. Now you find that people are saying, oh, you're exaggerating, you've got a chip on your shoulder. You know, but it's not, you know, unless you're in it, you're not going to understand. Because a lot of people, they think, oh, prison, because it's not up in your face, and unless you know somebody who has gone to prison, you don't even think about all of those people in prison. It doesn't even come into your radar. And you just think, oh, well, they've probably deserved it. You know, you're not too bothered. But these are our husbands, our brothers, our uncles. These are the men of our generation being castrated indirectly through imprisonment. It's just another form. And if you, I mean, um, that lady, I know I wrote it down somewhere, but you know, sometimes when I'm listening to some of these videos, I'm walking on the street. I haven't got a piece of paper. But she said that there was so many, there was more people incarcerated than there were slaves in the 1800. That's what she said, black, black men, more incarcerated. This is in America than there are enslaved. I don't know about the UK figures. I thought to myself, yes, you know, go and research and um, get all this information together, get all the figures. But I knew that if I did that, this video would not come out. So really, it's just out there so you can have a different viewpoint on how the prison system works, on how those, in those people in prison and why they're in prison. And, you know, just to give you a different perspective and not to numb your senses to what is going on.
because there's a lot of discrimination going on. I mean, I didn't realise either that hum humiliation was also a part of degrading the black men. You know, when they stop and search them in public and, make, and humiliate them, even if they're innocent, they've still gone to the, through that process of humiliation. They still go home feeling angry and resent resentful at the system for humiliating them, especially if there's women around or family members, whoever it is, you know, it's still a humiliating process. And, you know, sometimes I don't know if it's happened to you as a black person, but sometimes you're at work and someone, even at your work, you find people that you're working with, they just walk past you. You go, you, you look up and say hello, or you look up for, you know, you say good morning and they just literally walk past you. But then when they want something, they're, oh, oh, hi. Yeah, um, oh, hi. Can I, can you do this for me? And it leaves you feeling confused. It leaves you thinking, hey, hang on a minute. You walked past me a minute ago. You, you totally bypassed me. And what it does, it makes you question yourself. You're kind of like, did I imagine that? But it happens all the time. And I'm sure it's happened to a lot of you. You know, you work and you're chatting to people and you go on the street and you see people and they totally ignore you. They make out like they haven't seen you. And because of the way you are, you think, oh, well, it doesn't matter. But inside, it gnaws at you because you don't quite understand what's going on. But it's deliberate. It's a deliberate way. It might be conscious or unconscious of making a person feel humiliated. How dare you acknowledge me unless I acknowledge you? Don't acknowledge me unless I acknowledge you. That's really what they're saying. If I say hello to you, then it's fine. You can say hello to me, but don't you dare initiate the conversation. Know your place. So we are in a situation where we're kind of feeling arrows in all different forms and ways. And because it's so subtle and sophisticated, it's hard to challenge. It's hard to say, oh, someone is um, being rude or somebody is being racist when there's nothing overt about what they're doing and that their behaviour is very, very subtle. It's very, very difficult to pinpoint. And a lot of times, you know, even when they're putting people in prison, I mean, they um, portray it as though, you know, when you think, sorry to cut, change the subject, but even when you think about the majority, I think two thirds of those in prison are on read offences, you know, just, you know, having a spliff on them or something. And then they get criminalised for that. And that's considered drug offences. And when you're thinking about drug trafficking and drug dealing and drug kingpins, you think about this great big um, operation going on. You know, like when they showed the other day that they showed a video of all of these people planting um, weed in their homes. It's to make you think that that's what the majority of black people are doing. When it's a minority, it's a very, very small amount. But they've already put that picture in your mind so you can say, oh, serves them right, they need to go to jail, look what they're doing. You know? So not everything is as it seems. And all I'm saying is, you know, you just have to open your eyes a little bit and examine. Don't take everything for what it is. Do some examination, do some research and find out what's happening to black people, not only in the UK, but around the world. Well, not I shouldn't say around the world, because if you go to places like Africa, you know, you don't have this because everybody is black. The majority of people is black. There's no competition. There's no threat. I mean, the fact is, is that just by having a black skin, you're a threat, even as women, as black women. You know, if I dress up nice to go to work, you want to see the look sometimes. You know what I mean? So even black women are seen as a threat. And sometimes that's why they ignore you, because they can't get back at you any other way. And when policemen gun down 
blacks without a gun. It's because the very colour of their skin is a threat. They don't even have to have a gun or any kind of weapon. They're seen as a threat just by being black. I'm going to put the, you know, I'm going to find the source um, of the inspiration for this video and I'm going to put it in the link because it really makes interesting watching and listening because it's getting a bit um, out of hand now and we have to kind of think why is this happening? Why are so many of our black men in prisons? And we know it's a form of breaking up homes. We know it's a form of breaking up the family. We know it's a form of stigmatizing the black person. We know it's a form of racism, organized racism. And we know it's to perpetuate a myth that black people are dangerous, that they're criminals and that kind of thing. And the truth is, is that it's a lie. There's a minority and if people did the facts, I mean, a lot of people can't be bothered to look at the facts and I can't blame them. It's so complicated and it's bedded in so many different sources. So you can't blame people for just relying on the media and the news and YouTube to get their facts. But that's not facts. You have to remember that's just one person's perception, one person's opinion. I am giving you my opinion based on what I've heard and their opinion. That doesn't mean what they have said is fact. It doesn't mean that what I am saying is fact. It does mean that, you know, if you get in all these different sources, all this different, inf if you're getting information from different sources and it's saying the same thing, then that could be a fact. Not definitively a fact, but it could be a fact. So it's very important that you do do your own research before you start going running up your mouth. And another thing, um, there's what the lady, Megan um, Mins Francis, apparently she went, she was coming into America and one of the border force officials, they call them something else in America, they actually stopped her and she had this costume jewellery, which was a ring and it's one of those double rings, but it was made out of plastic. And they said to her, we're not letting you get on the plane because you have got a, a weapon on you and we can't allow any of your kind getting on the plane with a weapon and she couldn't believe it she said it's costume jewelry and they said that's your opinion all you do, all you people do is tell lies i'm going to send you the link so you it's not my word you can take it right from the horse's mouth anyway apparently she said she didn't like to do this but she had to give her credentials she had to say listen i'm a professor in such and such a university these are my credentials she had to give them the website and when she gave them the website details and he saw that she was a professor of um what was it civil rights liberties and law and all them things and he just she said his face just dropped and he had to step back and let her go. But one of the airport um, staff said he does it to all black people. But they, she's the only one that got away so quickly. Can you imagine how they, what they do? Find any little thing to hold you back on. So God forbid if you're going on a flight, please don't take anything that represents or could be interpreted as a weapon, even though it's not. Make all sure all your documents are kosher. Make sure that you have packed your suitcase. Because I tell you, the war to criminalize black people, to humiliate them and give them a hard time is on now more than ever. In a time when we live in a so-called civilized society, it seems like we're going centuries backwards. So, of course, this isn't a generalization. I'm not saying um, all white people are racist. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you've got groups of people that are hell bent on giving black people a hard time, hell bent on criminalizing them, hell bent on painting a very bad picture of them. And that's all I'm saying. So beware and don't take everything for granted. You know, just just widen your vision a little bit. And that's all for now. Sorry to go on so long. Bye bye.